All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back. This is another episode of Your Life, God's Word. We've been bouncing back and forth a little bit between um, a couple of series we're doing, one on Proverbs, one on deception. So we're going to dive back into the series on Proverbs, go through, I think, finish Proverbs chapter 1 in this uh, in this episode. We'll just kind of see how far we get. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Uh, you can comment on the YouTube videos. We do try to read those comments. But also on Facebook, at the Facebook page uh, for the church, you can be part of the greater community there, uh, sharing thoughts, prayer requests, um, all kinds of stuff there. So don't forget to check that out as well. So if you recall, last time we were on Proverbs, I think we got through verse 7 of chapter 1, and I think given the um, given the next several verses throughout the rest of the chapter, we'll probably be able to finish this chapter. Um, picking up with verses 8 through 19, if you want to follow along here, it says um, in Proverbs 1 and 8, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without reason. Like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole. Like those who go down to the pit, we shall find all precious goods. We shall fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot among us. We will all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Hold back your foot from their paths, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. For in vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird, but these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their own lives. Such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. It takes away the life of of its possessors. I'm reading in the ESV in case anyone's wondering. So a couple of things here. Um, he he sort of opens up with these verses and talks about not um, forsaking the instruction, the wisdom, the teaching of um, father and mother. And I think, uh, especially in Western culture, we are uh, getting to a point where it's almost the the perpetual, the forever now. Uh, we don't think too far into the future, and we almost come to despise the things of the past. A lot of the um, a lot of the uh, zeitgeist of the day, the spirit of the age, is to forget the past. Um, don't even don't think about the future. Just live for now. Live for the present. It's the eternal present. And um, this is foolish. This is extremely foolish. Uh, we need to learn from the past. We need to remember the past. We need to draw wisdom from the past, either past good or past uh, evil, and try to be better in the present. And we most certainly should be thinking forward into the future. But in order, in order to do this, wisdom and knowledge and instruction has to be passed on. It has to be learned in a generation, and uh, then the traditions and the things are passed on to the next generation. Now, that doesn't mean every single, um, every single tradition or every every single process <laughs> that is handed down has to be maintained. Uh, obviously, there's ways to uh, improve upon and make better certain things. Um, but generally, when it comes to just the overall wisdom of things, we need to really be uh, considering the wisdom of the past. This is something that many people, right? You're sitting in history class. You you just want to get through the you know you just want to get through the next thirty minutes, and then pass the test. Remember the dates. Remember the names. Remember the locations. Maybe remember the geography and be done with it. Um, but when it comes to actually understanding history, it's less about remembering specific names, dates, and more the general concept. 
Uh, there's a lot we can learn looking at, like in Western culture here in the United States, there's a lot we can learn from parallels in history over the last 100 and so years, let's say 100 to 150 years. Things that it's almost like we're, we're on repeat. We're repeating history right before us. And yet people don't know it. People don't, don't remember what happened then. And so we're doomed to repeat <laughs> what what happened with the poor decisions of the past. Um, there's a quote, I forget who said it, uh, history never repeats, but people always do. Um, of course, the, the famous quote, uh, those who don't remember or don't know history are doomed to repeat it. I think all these are very, they're very um, enlightening and they go right along with these first couple of verses. Um, you know, let these things, what, the Father's instruction, the Mother's teaching, um, they're a graceful garland on your head, pendants for your neck. Because <clears throat> we can learn from the wisdom of people that have been there and done that. It doesn't mean we have to do everything exactly the same. But I think one of the problems that we have in society is we've got this YouTube generation, right? We're putting this podcast on YouTube, uh, of course, on Spotify and things like that as well. But we, we, we watch a, a three-minute YouTube video from some joker like we don't even know. And we think we, all of a sudden, we know everything there is to know on that topic. Here's the five things you need to know about the Civil War, you know, and then we know everything there is to know. I, I don't think so. You know, some scientific, um, you know, breakthrough has undone uh, generations of history and it's, we're all, we, we're smarter now. We're better now. We're, we're more enlightened than they were, those, you know, peons from 120 years ago. Yeah, you know. There's a lot of collective wisdom that um, that we lose. You can go watch our first episode on um, on the book of Proverbs. We talk about the the Spurgeon quote. You know that there's no 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 fool so great a fool as a knowing fool. They they have knowledge, but they're not wise. And so because they have some kind of maybe scientific knowledge or technical expertise or something, they think that puts them in a position to to make decisions and um, operate in the realm of wisdom. The realm of wisdom requires knowledge, but the realm of wisdom is far above and beyond knowledge. And we need to be able to draw wisdom from tradition, from people that have been there, done that, from um, those that have helped pave the way, got us to where we are right now today. Um, this is why God puts things like teachers and elders in churches. Uh, it's not because he doesn't think or want people to be able to, you know, quote unquote, stand on their own two feet and that kind of thing. It's because before we can really get there, we save ourselves a lot of time and trouble and problems if we will listen and follow the wisdom of others while we are sort of developing our wings to fly. And then when we do, we realize that the path that somebody else was was flying is really the right path to be flying <laughs> a lot of times. Right, then he goes into this, you know, people trying to entice, um, you know, entice them uh, into, let's follow the crowd. You know, come on, everybody's doing this. Let's, let, we got stuff, let's do this. We're going to lie and wait. We're going to, uh, you know, fill our houses with plunder. We've got all these, you know, newfangled ideas. Um, you know, and he says, you know, hold back from that. And there is a... Um, I haven't actually, I watched an interview on it, and I'm, I'm going to be, um, I think, getting the book eventually. But there's a book by uh, Charles Murray, um, and it's called the, the Madness of Crowds. The Madness of Crowds. And, and, and the, whole, the concept is a lot of times when people are going in a certain way, and, and there's this this loud voice, uh, you know, Google the term groupthink if you're not aware of what that is. It's a it's a phenomenon where you have a majority or at least the, the vocal um, elements of a crowd or a meeting or a group sort of nudge everybody in a certain way. And then, you know, dissenting voices sort of just go along with or just, you know, acquiesce or whatever, and, and, and they could be going in a totally wrong direction, but everybody thinks, well, we're all on board with this, this is what everybody wanted, this is the consensus, 
and uh, then you end up going right over a cliff and um, everybody thought everybody was cool with it, but they weren't. And so we have to be careful not to just follow the crowd. Obviously, when it comes to Christianity and the truth of Scripture, uh, often God is completely uh, opposite of the crowd because the crowd is usually operating on uh, human terms, um, human intellect, human will. And so the crowd is most often completely wrong. Uh, but even outside of that, Charles Murray is not a Christian that I'm aware of in any way, shape, or form. I don't even know if he's religious at all. Um, but he has seen this phenomenon. Of course, people that have come up with the you know the term groupthink and written books and stuff about it, again, it has nothing to do with just a Christian perspective or a scriptural perspective. It is a natural phenomenon within, um, within nature, within people. A natural phenomenon within nature. <laughs> yeah, I think that kind of captures it when you say natural phenomenon. But it is within within people. We have this tendency um, to get swept up in some kind of you know groupthink, a crowd. You know, the crowd is roaring. And and um, I saw a quote one time. It said, "None of us is as none of us is as dumb as all of us." <laughs> right? There's no individual person. That's really this stupid, but somehow this huge group of people or this well, small group of people that was really loud um, came up with this thing. And so there's a lot of that going on in society today, and I think you can look around and just kind of see it. And we have to be careful. We have to be people that think for ourselves. We have to be people that do um, uh, critical thinking, um, step back, look at things ourselves. You'll hear a lot of terms like, you know, the consensus or, well, everyone thinks, or, uh, well... When everyone thinks this, let's just let's just look at it and be, be careful. Maybe everyone is right, but a lot of times everyone is wrong because it's comfortable to sort of go along with the crowd. And once the crowd gets moving in a direction, even if it was the horribly wrong direction, uh, sometimes it's easy just to get swept up and go along with that sort of that current. Uh, so we have to be careful with that. And I think this is a good uh, a good illustration in the scriptures. Um, to, to warn us against it. Um, so, you know, again, just be individual, make individual decisions, um, cleave to God and His Word, His Scriptures, and don't just go along with the crowd. And that, that includes a Christian crowd. You know, a lot of times there are people who, who sort of get into this, um, into this like consensus thing even in Christianity, oh well, look, there's all these all these church leaders are saying, even though it seems contrary to the word, but I mean, you know, they got such a big church, or they have such a big following, or uh, again, those kinds of numbers don't matter. If you were to look, if you if we were to f be um, standing there, you know, next to the apostle Peter, and we're given the option, hey, are we going to follow Jesus or not? A lot of times, if we were to look at the crowds. Uh, the crowds were walking away from Jesus. Certainly when it was time to crucify Jesus, the crowds were all saying, hey, let's crucify this guy. So the crowds often, often, often get it wrong. We need to be people that think for ourselves, assess things, and follow righteousness and follow wisdom um, as determined uh, in the context of, again, of God, of Scripture. So I would highly recommend that uh, that we you know, study these Scriptures and learn from them. Now, the uh, the next few verses, um, Proverbs chapter one verses twenty through thirty three, are interesting. Check this out. <clears throat> Wisdom cries aloud on the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Now, throughout the book of Proverbs, we will find over and over this theme that, uh, you know, it's not that wisdom and, 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 and prudence and these things are just these esoteric, these esoteric concepts that are so difficult to, to understand that you need the professionals to come and, and, and tell you and show you, point the way. Um, no, anyone can be wise. In fact, wisdom is in the streets crying out, hey, hear my voice. The problem is a lot of people scoff and don't want to hear wisdom. 
you know, when we want to be lazy and wisdom says hard work is the way to go, you know, <laughs> uh, a lot of times it's easy to scoff. Um, again, you mix that with something where, you know, the crowd is all going this way. Why would I go against the crowd? Why go against the grain? Why go against the common um, feeling of the day? Uh, you know, so why stand out? And so we have to be, we have to be very careful. But wisdom is for everyone. And this reminds me of James. I think it's chapter one where it says, "Hey, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. He will give. He he gives it. He will give it liberally to people." But remember, the way you get wisdom isn't just like you know God opens up your your brain and just like pours it in, doop 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 doop. You know, like topping off your gas tank or something. Um, usually, wisdom comes through things like experience. Wisdom comes through. Uh, times where maybe the crowd's going this way and you have to make a stand and say, no, I'm not. And then, you know, it plays out and you're like, wow, I'm glad I didn't, wow, glad I didn't do that. Um, but again, which I guess I just described what I said, experience. Um, wisdom a lot of times can come through other people's experiences. why it's important to listen to wisdom from tradition or wisdom that comes from others. We don't have to make the same mistakes. We don't have to recreate the wheel, so to speak. Uh, but wisdom is out there for us. We just have to uh, be courageous enough and uh, really wise enough <laughs> to continue to increase in wisdom. Uh, so again, you know, how, how long are you going to hate knowledge? How long are you going to, you know, scoff? Verse 23, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you because I've called and you refuse to listen have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof. Look at this. I also will laugh at your calamity. I'll mock when terror strikes you. When terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they'll call upon me, but I won't answer. Uh, they will seek me diligently, but I, or whoops, but will not find me. Sorry about that. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and have fill, have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. So, in short, this is the concept of sowing and reaping. You have uh, sown foolishness, you will reap foolishness. You delighted in the scoffing, you, you ignored the counsel, you didn't want to... Uh, make sometimes, right? Sometimes the wisest choice is the harder choice. This is often the case. Um, sometimes that, you know, sometimes, pretty much all the time, the thing, things that really matter, they're, they're more difficult, they're more work. Um, and so I think what, what, what can happen here is we end up uh, choosing the easier path, choosing the path of least resistance, going along with the crowd, doing what is easy for the time, not thinking about the future, not looking at the repercussions um, based on past events and history and past collective knowledge and wisdom and tradition. Then we make a bad decision. Then we have to pay for that bad decision. And wisdom is saying, well, when your calamity strikes, I'm going to be laughing at you. You're now, oh, now you're going to want that sound sage advice. But guess what? It's not going to be there for you. Uh, you're just going to have to suck it up and, you know, bear with the consequences. I know that sounds tough, but God is not in the business of just cleaning up our messes. Um, I, I, you get the feeling sometimes that that some Christians sort of, I don't know, I, I don't think they would, <laughs> I don't think they would say it that way. Um, but they do, they do think that. They think, oh, well, you know, I can just kind of do whatever I want. And God is going to, you know, he just loves me so much. You know, if I'm making a bad decision here, you know, everything happens for a reason. Well, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes things happen for a reason. Sometimes that reason is we made a dumb decision. <laughs> um, we need to 
we need to be very careful uh, that we don't just flippantly uh, sort of walk through life uh, acting like reaping and sowing are not uh, a reality. If we sow um, into wisdom, we sow into knowledge and instruction, we, we, uh, we are people who um, weigh things out and think through issues and, you know, again, critical thinking, um, prayerfully considering things, going to the Word, going to elders and leaders and people for wisdom and guidance. We just fly off the handle and make a decision, and then three years later, we're paying a hefty, hefty, hefty price. Wisdom says, I'm going to be laughing at you. Um, you know, sometimes, I mean, again, working with people, pastoring people, counseling people, doing different things, I've seen people for years um, pay the price of a, of a bad decision. Um, uh, families, uh, you know, years later, a decade later, be paying the price for um, a decision or a series of decisions that were made foolishly, and it's not that it's not that we can't, you know, get back on the right path or something like that. I mean, sometimes you know you're just not gonna get back on the right path, but a lot of times we can. But the repercussions are still there, right? David was forgiven for the whole thing with uh, Bathsheba and uh, his adultery and murder and all that, but he still had to pay a price the rest of his life. He was paying the price for that. Um, I think sometimes we forget that. We look at just the, oh, look at the forgiveness and mercy of God. That's true. It was there. It was amazing. Um, but David, I mean, God literally through the prophet, I mean, pr through the prophet told him, you're going to have strife and problems in your family for the rest of your life because of this. You know, so again, he's, you know, he's, he's 30 years past <laughs> the event, still paying the price, still paying the price. Um, was he forgiven? Of course. Did God love him? Of course. But guess who was sort of in the background laughing? Wisdom. That was, that was, that was a mistake. She had have done that. That was unwise. We need to be people of wisdom. We need to consider we need to walk carefully. Um, the Bible tells us to, you know, I think the King James is walk, you know, be walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise in Ephesians. Um, but what does that mean? Carefully, cautiously. Um, we need wisdom. We need to um, be people that are, again, careful. We, we, we consider things. We, we go to people that have wisdom. They know Scripture. Um, they care for us, but they're, they they also love us enough to be honest with us. Some people love us just enough to help us destroy ourselves, <laughs> which, of course, I'm saying um, sort of tongue-in-cheek because, no, real love is the love that will say it tough even when it may not be convenient. Um, it's not loving to allow somebody to walk out into traffic blindfolded and say nothing. Um but a lot of times we don't we don't want to hear that dissenting voice. Uh, I've used this example before, maybe not on the podcast here, but um, uh, uh, someone that I know uh, was once told, "I don't want, I didn't want to come to you. Like I don't want to ask you because I know what you're going to say." <laughs> like, you know, you you don't you don't want to hear what somebody who's wise and loves you and knows the word because you kind of already know what the answer is going to be. That's not acting in wisdom. See, that wisdom would not behave that way. Um, that's foolishness. That's foolishness. And, you know, verse 31, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. Um, I'm raising, well, not, I mean, not just me, but you know, my wife and I are raising three children right now. Uh, it is very easy. It is very easy just to give in. It's very easy because you, know, you can win the battle today and they'll be right back tomorrow. Ah, come on. And, you know, testing that resolve and, you know, and it's constant, 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 constant. And it's easy to give in. It's easy to, even knowing this is not the best thing for my child, 
Um, but ah, uh, you know, and then we start to equivocate and well, it wasn't really going to be that bad or oh, it's not. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> right? Oh, everybody lets their kids do this. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, mm, the crowds are sending their kids to hell. So I don't want to send my kids there. Um, you know, we, but we reap what we sow. We, we do reap what we sow. And we need to be people that understand that. We will eat the fruit of the crops that we have planted. Uh, we want a good marriage. You're going to have to, we got to sow into that marriage. Um, year after year, time after time, you're going to make mistakes, but you got to, you got to do the things that are, that are difficult. You got to sacrifice. You want to raise good kids. That's the way it's got to be. There's going to be a lot of times where you're just like, you're so, you're emotionally drained and exhausted and just, oh, I just want to, and, and we, and you can't because, uh, you let your guard down, you, um, give in to unwise decisions and slippery slope. And eventually you wake up five, 10 years later and go, oh my gosh, what, what's going on? What happened? Where, how do we get here? Right? The devil must have come in. No, it wasn't the devil. The devil was off on vacation while you were messing up your life, making stupid decisions. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of times we like to blame a lot of stuff on, on the devil. And no, it wasn't the devil. It was, it was us. We sabotaged ourselves. And, um, um, and then we think that we're not going to eat the fruit of our um, of our vineyard, but we are. We are. The Bible teaches that. The Bible teaches that we are going to um, we are going to reap what we sow. And so I would say, let's sow to wisdom. Let's sow to the good things of God. Let's, if we want to be blessed, let's see uh, some of the principles of blessing. Some of the blessing principles. What you know, when when Moses stood there, said, you know, you got you got two decisions. You want to be cursed. You want to be blessed. You know, it wasn't just like that's it. Just go with it. Just pick one. You know, no, you want to be blessed. Well, there's 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 criteria that that go along with that. You know, a lot of times we want the the blessing without the criteria that go along with it. Um, we want uh, you know just be blessed and highly favored of the Lord, but not be um, subject to the Lord, not abide by His principles and His precepts. We want to follow this way, that way, this newfangled idea, or that easier path. Um, and, 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 and again, we're going to reap what we sow. So this is what I like to say. Look at what you're reaping. Look at what you're reaping right now. Right? Let's consider what we are reaping. If, if the Bible's true, now if you don't believe the Bible's true, then you know, I guess it doesn't work, but if you believe the Bible's true and we reap what we sow, then let's look at what we're reaping, and that'll let us know what we sowed. You know? You want to know kind of what, what is going on here. Well, what? Let's look at what we're reaping, and let's dissect that. Let's see, hmm, what have we been sowing? Um, a lot of times I recommend that we we get someone that's wise, objective, you know, an elder, a leader, somebody that's, um, again, not just somebody with a title, but someone that is, you know, they, they know Scripture, they're prayerful, they love you, um, that can help help walk through this exercise, right? Was Job reaping what he was sowing? No. No. There, there, somebody else had sown that, right? The enemy had sown that, and... God was allowing that to happen. So there are times where we reap what others sow. Um, you know, a child that's 12 years old that's suffering from emotional pain and trauma because they were um, abused at six, did they did they sow that? No. No, of course not. Um, we reap what we sow. We also reap at times what others sow. That's why we need someone objective to help us walk through and unpack it, unwind it. Let's talk, look, where are we now? What's going on? Uh, let's dissect this. Let's talk this through. How did we get here? What do you, what's going on? What, what could have led to this? What's triggering this? What's, because that will help to show where maybe we have sown some of that, all of that, uh, or we can have somebody objective saying, hey, no, this is, this is common. This is not. No, you did. You did everything that you could. And sometimes things. Um, this is what someone else is sowing. You know, a rebellious child. Uh, is that one hundred percent always because the the parents sowed 
um, a lack of discipline or no, no, not always. Um, because at a certain point that child is going to start sewing for themselves. Um, you know, but is it often a combination? Yes. Often it's a combination. Often when you look at children doing things and stuff and often it's a combination and it's, it could be stuff that, you know, we, we did two or three years ago and it's coming out now. Uh, it could be small things that we didn't think was a big deal, but now we're realizing it was a lot bigger deal than what we thought. Um, there's just a lot to unpack there. So in the in the in the whole reaping, you know, sowing and reaping um, sphere, in, in in that with that concept, I don't want to leave people with the impression that. Everything that happens is entirely your fault. So everything that good that happens, you can just take all the credit. Or everything bad that happens, it must be your fault somehow. That's not what the principle of reaping and sowing is, is saying. Uh, because it, the Bible is very clear and shows examples. I, I just used Job just because it came to me um, you know, right off the bat here. But there's lots of examples where uh, you know, there, there are times where we, we do reap what other people are sowing. People are sowing things and we're going to be... Um, in that vicinity, right, and bear the repercussions of that, uh, good and bad sometimes. So and I just talked about wisdom from tradition and others, right? If people have been there, done that, dug it out, found the wise choice, guess what? We get to reap what they sowed uh, if we're smart enough to do so. And then we can look at bad examples of people, and we get to avoid reaping what they sowed, right? Um, so just wanted to kind of balance that out with a little bit of uh, understanding there. And that's why I recommend, again, go to somebody. If you're having an issue, if you're seeing some things, things are happening in the family, things are happening in your marriage, things are happening in your in your job, things are happening in your prayer life, you're not where you want to be um, in the kingdom, you know, oh, I feel like I should have more fruit, I feel like I should have, you know, be further along than this, I feel like I shouldn't be struggling with this anymore, I feel like I shouldn't be having this attitude any longer, I feel like, you know, whatever it might be, Okay, let's sit down. Sit down with someone that loves you, knows you, can dive into the Word, can unpack that, and and start to realize where we might be contributing, you know, the sowing and the reaping, and where we might be reaping uh, from what others have sown and what we can do going forward um, with that. That, I believe, is just a matter of wisdom. It's a matter of wisdom. That's what we're talking about. Proverbs chapter 1, we are talking about wisdom. So hopefully this has helped you. Again, wisdom from tradition, wisdom from others. These are critical. These are vital. We need to be people that are learning and growing and developing from both the good and the bad examples throughout history, um, in our own families, in our own um, community and situation. And um, we need to be people that realize the concept of sowing and reaping. We need to sow to wisdom. We need to learn, grow, develop, understand what God's will is, what the principles of the kingdom are, and then do them. Um, and that way we can be uh, much more uh, secure in our position, as it says in Proverbs 1.33, whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. So we're going to leave it right there. I love you guys. Can't wait to hear what you're getting out of Proverbs chapter 1 or anything that you, you know, comments and stuff on wisdom, times where you've seen sowing and reaping in effect. Um, love to hear the comments in the, um, in the uh, comment section of YouTube, or you can hit us up on Facebook as well. Connect with us and become part of the community of Bread Breakers. Love you guys. God bless you. And we will catch you on the next episode. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that content from Bread Breakers. If you enjoyed the content, give us that thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions on future content or anything like that, don't forget to leave us a comment in the comment section. Also, subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, every time we put out something new, a new video, a new interview, whatever it might be, you will be notified. We will throw some additional videos and playlists up here on the screen. And as always, God bless you. We'll catch you on the next video.